I'm going to predict a little bit <coughs> later on, um, as I have a, a question for everyone to, to ponder about. Um, but, uh, and I appreciate the information on the videos. Is there any way we can get the presentations that have been given? Like, you know, the actual presentations they've shown during their video or presentation? I can email the speakers and ask for those, okay. certainly. I'll do that. And in regards to that, I've downloaded mine on this laptop, so she already has this one. Thank tonight. you. <laughs> and, and I don't have one. <laughs> but it's all yours. <laughs> oh, it's you, Shai. All right. Um, uh, my name's Paul Ketchum, as she mentioned. I'm uh, over in liberal studies. I've taught at the university and college level for uh, 15, 18 years now. Um, I used to be in sociology here, um, got a cool job off over in liberal studies, so I ended up going over to liberal studies where I teach like 90% all online. Um, we do a little bit of hybrid stuff over there, but for the most part it's, it's online. Um, we were actually talking earlier about, we, we kind of thought we'd both be coming in here with completely different perspectives, <laughs> and after a couple minutes it was pretty clear that we were actually you know, two sides of the exact same coin here. Um, online teaching is still growing, going through its growing pains. Nobody's quite sure where it's heading, what we're going to end up doing with it. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of big changes going on, uh, experimentation going on with online education right now. Uh, everything from the MOOCs, those are the massive online classes that a couple of consortiums are putting together uh, to um, different technology-based uh, methodologies of, of, of teaching. Um, and i got to be honest, the reality is it seems to be shaking out to online teaching is apparently going to be the same thing as essentially classroom teaching with slight differences. Uh, where the technology is just a tool, not something that changes everything altogether. The biggest difference between online class and a, a brick and mortar classroom um, is the ability to teach students at different times in different places. Space and time are the big differences with online versus classroom. Um, there are strengths and weaknesses to both, but the longer we do teach them, the more that the online is shaking out to be kind of like, you know, a, a slightly modified version of what we of what we were doing in the classroom. Um, it's easier in certain sub areas, at least right now, than others. My wife, for example, is a biologist, um, and you know, it's kind of tough to teach a, a, a lot of biology labs online. Uh, I'm a sociologist. I found that we can, I, I, I'm now working with a number of graduate students um, doing master's thesis, doing original research, and I've never met them in person. And that's kind of cool and handy, and, and the technology allows us to do that. But other than that, how we set it up, how we do it, how I teach in the classroom, virtual or not, um, it, the same issues, the same benefits apply to both. If, we're, if we want to teach more classes, we do exactly what they do in the classroom. We go to things like multiple choice, or more, I'm sorry, if we want to teach more students at one time, we do the exact same things that you do in the classroom. You go to more standardized, you know, multiple choice tests. Uh, if we're working with fewer students, we do more um, essays, more papers. Um, and that's pretty much the difference. Um, the one thing I do like, I especially like about online teaching, is it turns out that I get to work one-on-one -on -one with students a lot more than I ever did in the classroom, which goes against everything you would think. Um, but I, I find that it's just real easy to get together, you know, individual conversations via email, discussion boards on things like D2L. I do a lot of phone calls with students. Um, I, I'm now one of those crazy people that has the blue <coughs> earpiece that walks around and talks and you think they're, you know, you're, you're not sure whether to, to lock them up or what. And a lot of times that'll be talking with my students. 
uh, I'll, uh, it's not odd for me to be in Home Depot talking to a student about some questions they have, which is fine by me and fine by them. It's, you know, moderately free time for me. Uh, it's time that works for them. And other than that, and that, that's what allows me to, to be in closer contact with them. So despite the fact that I've never seen many of them, and I won't see, some of them I'll never meet. Others I'll meet at graduation. Other than that, I, I, I know them probably better than I've known any other students. That's a really neat point. That's a really neat point. It, 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 it's the thing that surprised me the most about Because that's it. the fear of many faculty that I work with, that, that it's that, mm -hmm. that distance from their students. Yeah. They don't want to lose that touch with their students. Yeah, it, it, it does just the opposite. Huh. I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Alicia Burris, um, <laughs> as Carrie has said. I have an interesting uh, background. It's relevant, so I'm going to go ahead and describe that a little bit, because yes, I, I am in technology. Um, I am very pro-academia. <laughs> um, I did my bachelor's here at the university in psychology, um, cognition, and developmental psych, focusing on taking in content, declarative information, something that's memorized versus something that has a deep kind of engagement to it and how that encodes in the brain for learning. That's what I started with. Then I moved over to the Ed Psych Department, where I am currently at working on my PhD. Um, May, I should be defending my dissertation in May, <laughs> next semester. Um, and I'm focused on how decisions are made upon with the learners. Um, so instructional design of content, dispersion of content, how to actively engage students in learning in order to arrive at that deep, uh, deeper level of thinking, not shallow processing, memorizing kinds of things. So always staying over on that side. Um, for the last nine years, I've worked uh, and work with IT. So I work in the technology field, and I breathe in the academia professor's offices, and there seems to be where I would think there would be this melding, I mean, this, this great synergy of what is happening in education. And I find that there's a lot of misconceptions. Um, a lot of the instructional design type context, a lot of people take it, and as soon as they hear instructional design, they're like, ugh. You're going to systematically kill my pedagogy and my creativity in my classroom. Well, there are some standards. There are some things to pay attention to in regards to instructional design. Then on the technology side, we've got, we've got all this great stuff. We should be doing this, and, and people should beam in and out of classrooms, and, you know, <laughs> we have all this great stuff where it doesn't really hit all of the instructional objectives for the instructor. So there's this mismatch. Um, the best harmony... Um, I guess is what we're looking for, and as you had stated, it's, a, it's evolving, even with online classes, it's seeing what, how this grows, how it works together. Um, my area is actually looking at the influence of technology and faculty's intentions to utilize it. And in looking at that, uh, why I'm bringing it here is because you are all faculty-to-be <laughs> with your classes, if not faculty right now. Um, and not every technology, just because it's out there, I don't want to, I don't buy into the consumerism, um, I got to have the new phone, I've got to have, oh my gosh, look, the Android is out, oh, go look at this, well, then I must have that in my classroom. I'm probably the biggest opponent of that, um, and I apologize if I already, you, you disagree with me, um, but I think I might make a few points tonight that's going to drive it home that if you are on the opposite side of that, it's really important for your students um, that some of the consumerism urges to bring technology into the classroom don't quite hit the instructional goals. Um, they can if you pay attention to how you design your use of technology. You as the instructor come first. You, the content that you're presenting to your students comes first. How you design, how you want your students to interact with the <coughs> content, how you design your classroom to progress from the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester, how you want your content to be presented into maybe this comprehensive overview of your discipline in the very end, all exists prior to any tool that you already have all of that. Uh, what I would suggest with technology is focus on things that, the activities that you plan with your content. You want to have group work. You want to have, um, if you, if you want to have particular types of research projects that are due at the end. So you have incremental projects or homework assignments or all those different activities. However you are designing your activities with your students, design that first and then say, hey, is there a tool 
that can help me do that more effectively or more efficiently? Can I be and are you willing to be in, in Home Depot talking about a problem or a solution set? That also matters too. Some people have the misconception that, well, if I have a whole bunch of technology, um, then that's going to teach my class for me. That's probably the worst perspective you could have. It's a technology field dream because that means you're going to buy good stuff. But is that really hitting your instructional objectives for your students? And I think that's why I point out the consumerism part is I think we get, we get lost in that, even in higher education, just as a university itself. We gotta be, the, you know, we gotta be competitive against UT. We gotta be, you know, all those kinds of things. We gotta, we gotta be able to network and have, you know, classes in China and Italy in our classroom so that we can communicate. And there's this push to put all that in there. But really, what it really comes down to, is your content, your classroom, your students, and the active engagement that they're going to get out of that and interacting with your content. You don't have to have all the cameras. It's cool if you can work them in. But the first one of the things I'd really like to stress is any kind of time you think about technology, it is only going to be used as an accessory to your design in your class. And when you do that, I have seen some of the professors that have blown me away by just using the smallest little pieces that have come in and it's like, wow. One, and I'll admit this, some of them I was like, wow, they know how to do that. <laughs> okay, that's one piece. As a student, I admit that. It's like, oh, okay, that, that's impressive. But the second piece was, wow, that meant it was useful right then, right there, for what we needed it for. And one of them that I'm thinking of is a personality <coughs> psychology instructor. She lectured. We usually do lectures and group activities. Um, we had active assignments to where we had to work in our groups and then present in front of class and then split groups where we had opposing thoughts work together. And then she showed a short little video, simple technology here, just video, that really drove home the concept. That piece right there was the most useful piece. But it was simple. It wasn't, it, she didn't design her entire class around this video. It was something she felt, oh, that's going to add to. Oh, that's really going to supplement. Man, that's going to put the icing on it. That's going to do that. Those, that would be my first and probably most important message that I would like to send out. And just speaking from the technology expert is Carrie. <laughs> um, I love tech. I love it. I think we can do some cool stuff. And when we can beam in and out of classrooms, and that would be, I hope that's my day. But for the practical application, the educational psychologist in me says content, your instructional objectives, how am I reaching my students, and how am I engaging them. If the technology I'm putting in my classroom is not engaging them, I'm kind of doing them a disservice because it just means that I think it's cool. Okay, so that would be what one of the main things. You know, I, well, I was going to kind of move on to, okay, cool. to a related area um, because it has to do with the technology. I think where the technology is taking us back on the online education mm -hmm. end of it. Um, mm -hmm. We, right now we have, like the department I work for, liberal studies, we're all online. We're there for non-traditional students, for people that life happened to them, they come back and do a degree, um, you know, usually a few years later. And that, that's who we're designed for. And we have our master's programs and stuff like that. And um, again, that's for, for non-traditional students. And all of that works really well. You have to pretty much do that online. That's by far the easiest way to do that, to get those people to reach them. But I think we're going to become, my boss will probably fire me for this, we're probably going to become obsolete in a few years. Because here the main campus, each department, is embracing online education more and more. We used to be cutting edge over where I'm at. And now we're stuck so far behind everybody else because we got stuck in this rut of the the class had to fit in the format because the format was con convenient for IT to do the same way for all of the classes. Uh, we're mostly part-time people. I'm one of the few full-timers with our department. Um, and, and that's where the online is kind of coming in. Um, online education will probably be focused in the next few years, not exclusively, but it looks like it's going to be focused on the lower division classes at universities. It's the replacement for where we used to throw all of the grad students to go teach. I mean, that's, you know, that's where we're heading with it. 
it's going to be the massive classes that can be even more massive if you're doing it online. Not because that's the best way to do online teaching, because that seems to be where administration sees the most value in it. Uh, it just like universities are quick to farm out undergrad, um, I'm, I, I graduated from Texas A&M, by the way, if you went to Alabama, ha! just <laughs> get that in there from the other day. Um, we have a feeder community college that's actually part of a, another community college system. They moved one up there by A&M that they've literally got to deal with A&M to do as much of the lower division classes as possible. You can be an A&M student and never set, on, set foot on campus for two years. Mind you, college station isn't that big. You're bound to trip and fall into campus. But that's that area where the expertise isn't focused on as much. Those are your generalist classes. And the generalist classes are the ones that are more likely to have the universities make use of the technology. I don't think this is the best way to do it. But where they seem to be heading is using those classes to do massive things. If you think back, I'm sure everybody had this, maybe one or two if you were lucky. As an undergrad, do you remember having different types of teachers? You had those classes where the test was based entirely off the book and there was nothing out of the lecture. You remember those? That is perfect for an online class because nobody wanted to go to that class anyway because you, there was no value added for what you felt yeah. you were getting for it. There was no value added to showing up to <laughs> class. So that particular class is ideal to do online. The student can read the stuff at their leisure. They have a set time, they have, they have a deadline. You will have an exam over, you know, between this time and that time. You must take it then. Great. Is that adding to how they're learning? It's okay if it's in the mix, I guess. I don't know. It's not the best way, but education should have a mix of learning styles, a mix of focuses. Um, the problem is that's where we seem to be heading for most of our online classes. Also, you have the book publishers are major players in online education now. The book publishers are coming in with preset classes. And where that really plays into where we are currently. You guys are all familiar with the market out there. You know that they're, it's tough to get a, not impossible, but tough to get a full-time gig. And that a lot of you are going to end up as, as either electronic or real freeway flyers. Where you're picking up part-time classes at different places. This is where the online stuff comes into play because they'll have those set classes for you. We have them in liberal studies. We, we can take any person, plug you into a classroom and have you teaching it in less than two hours. You're ready to roll because the class is already put together for you and you are essentially a moderator for a, a pre-designed class. And again, I don't think that's the way it should go, but that's the way that more and more departments are doing it. And we're seeing it in other departments around campus. We're seeing more and more of the lower division classes is where the online stuff is going, which is weird because, as I was saying earlier, with even graduate students, you can do graduate research work in a purely online setting. Mm -hmm. But there's that, you know, race to the to the bottom for you know what's most convenient, and there are other political pressures at play. Um, ideally, we would have upper division classes and more of them where they're online. Uh, because you can do some really creative stuff. There are limits. But as a sociologist, for example, there is essentially no class that I can't teach online as well as I teach in the classroom. In, in fact, in some cases, it's much easier. I, I, um, when I was in sociology for years, I taught a very popular class that I had designed, um, Race in the Media. And it's better as an online class because you just assign films and TV shows and stuff that's available on Hulu, through Netflix, through whatever. And they can watch it at, at, their, at, you know, at their convenience. And then we can have online discussions for it. 
those are the classes that should be developed more, and hopefully you will get a chance to do that as you work your way up or doing upper division classes and stuff like that. Those are the times where technology, where online technology really helps you teach a class where it can make a class much better. Because you're not wasting precious classroom time showing films. There's nothing worse, wait till you're in the classroom. Even if it's a class about film, there's nothing worse than wasting, it's like reading your textbook in class. An online situation changes that dramatically. The idea that you can just assign it here, go watch this, makes for a much, much better class. And the online discussions can get quite lively um, and, and are sometimes much better than in the classroom. Mostly because students have to watch what they say. They have to choose their words more carefully because you don't have the inflection. You don't have the facial cues. And we're, we're a generation that's a little more experienced with things like Facebook and you know how to you know, inflame people rather quickly. So you, you get usually much better conversations. It, it's, it, the technology is sometimes just really beautiful. But it's, it's a tool that works really well for certain things and not for others. And that's how you've got to play with it with the online. I actually want to ask some questions. If you don't mind, I'd like to go around. I'd like to hear what, what your domain is. Have you taught? Um, and what's the technology that you think already? Because I'm, you know your content. You know what you, you want to do and how you've had some little ideas of how you want to present this information. Um, what's the, something you thought was just cool? I mean, real simple. Just so your name, your domain, um, and a technology that you contemplated going, oh, I'd like to use that in my classroom. So I'm going to be awkward and start all over here, if you would, please. Yes. Okay. My name's Alicia. Oh, beautiful name. <laughs> I love that. Um, I am in industrial organizational psychology. Okay. And I am not TAing a class right now. I'm teaching. I don't, I didn't have enough time to think about. No, no, you're fine. Question. You're fine. I, I know. I just threw it out there. So have you taught before? No. Have you been in a class where... Professor had used a lot with the technology, tried to use technology. Well, the best, I had an online class where okay. the professor actually did lectures online, so he was just like videotaped the lecture and we could watch it at our own time. And that was just nice to fit in with the rest of my class. There you go, autonomy, then, like, yeah. So. I, that, was, that was a purely online class? Yeah. Was that easier for you than attending a class? Yeah, because I could watch it whenever I wanted to. And there was like supplemental like readings and um, like websites you would go look at. So. Okay. Uh, I'm Katie and I'm a TA for Understanding Art, which is a general ed art history class. Okay. Master's student and we use PowerPoint daily. Okay. To show images, no text, just the image. <laughs> Okay, our yes. history, you gotta be able to project the images. That's, that's about it. <laughs> okay, so you're probably thinking of doing that same kind of thing when you're, you're a TA, you're using that now? You pretty much have to, yeah. Okay. So just being effective with PowerPoint, so not learning how to use PowerPoint correctly has been a big part of our, our discipline. Okay, so I'm gonna go to you, too. I'm probably a PhD candidate in art history. Okay. Also a TA with Katie. But I taught it with a summer point of history survey class, and I also used PowerPoint, and then I incorporated YouTube videos. Okay. That just demonstrated a little bit more in-depth knowledge about whatever I'm probably discussing that day. Okay, so you use it as a supplement. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. We'll go with you. Sure. Um, my name is Nancy Gimby. I'm a PhD candidate in the Department mm -hmm. of English. Okay. I'm originally from Cairo, Egypt. Um, so I never, I have never uh, thought online. I would love to. I sometimes um, show some videos or like short films in my classes. Um, I teach writing basically. Uh, one of the writing units I teach is how to write like an ethical argument. Um, how to deal with the representation of the misrepresentation of a certain group in films. So that's when I uh, watch, you know, like parts of a film, not like an entire thing with my students and try to analyze it and stuff. But other than that, I haven't. 
Okay, so if you get lots of writing from your students, yeah. what would be the magic technology that would help you just fly through all those uh, papers? I would love, yeah, an invention to great for me and read for me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you find me one? <laughs> Dang! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so not that I know of, I don't know. Okay, okay. Well, in Viva would maybe I was going to say, Viva, yeah. well, but put a yeah. Viva on the front end, oh my goodness. Yeah. You'd have to have nodes from days. Yes, yes. Can I do my own writing as well, like my dissertation? Uh, I probably not. Probably not. Probably not. I hadn't known about, I hadn't known about <laughs> that one by now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you ma'am, please. I'm Leslie Van Beskirk, and I am newly in the Department of Adult and Higher Ed. Okay. I have not taught. I came from liberal studies and came through... Uh, an MPA program in, in the advanced program, so I'm more on the consumer end. I've seen most of those things and have found them to be quite effective. Okay, all right. And you're looking to probably be teaching in adult and higher ed, any particular? I'm, I'm actually in the workforce learning and development. Okay. Emphasis. Okay, all right. Hmm. I can't think of a question for you. <laughs> I was trying. <laughs> and right behind you, please. Um, my name is Tammy Smith. I'm also in the adult higher education, uh, focused on workplace training. Okay. I have an IT solutions background, um, and I think I'm in this program because I saw workplace training and development. I'm not academia. I probably won't be in academia, but it's a lot of these teachings that need to come into the field of training, and putting somebody in front of a computer is not how you educate or train them. So I can see a lot of great ways to use it. And uh, many examples have been noted, but um, I'd like let our focus, our emphasis is probably outside academia, but why will be supplemented with some teaching. So right. you take on more role. of a training focus than a teaching focus. So. No, but that's a tough role too, because you, at least in a teaching focus for something, you have a baseline of people who, for instance, everybody in college, if you're teaching on the college level, you know that that baseline of education is at college entrance level. Um, in your field, I think that would be a lot bright, broader and the training that you would have to encompass would be a lot broader. It takes a lot more interaction. Than, yeah. You know, that you're talking about online teaching and it's not effective in corporate America to stick employees in front of a computer and call that training, so. Ah, no, no. And you know, I, even speaking, in IT we have workshops as well, believe it or not. There's not all of us program and not all of us code and not all of us speak five different languages of code. Um, but it, it is difficult. It, it is really difficult because you have a work a workforce um, mentality when approaching the training movement. In academia you're approaching it with academia. I'm gonna learn, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna suffer at this. In a workforce training is I gotta learn this. And I gotta or be I good at it. Or I don't want to learn this. Or I don't want yeah. Oh that's difficult. Oh, wow. And you, Mary? My name is Peter Stefano. <clears throat> and uh, right now I'm the, in the Department of Car Ed, but uh, my background is in civil engineering and architecture. Okay. And I have a question for you. Um, I don't know how this technical, practical classes can be taught online. Uh -huh. I don't know. You tell me, is this possible? Because I don't have that experience. Uh, usually those classes, they're taught one by one or they're just traditional lecture method. Right. This is actually one of the reasons why I was asking everybody to talk about their areas. And somebody, I was hoping somebody would point out an area going, I don't know how technology is going to help in this area. How can you, you mentioned your wife's biologist. That would be di really difficult. I mean, there's just some things. Um, I, I describe a little bit more. I'm going to turn this over to you. Cause I, you I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe in some area technology is really good. Uh, really advanced, really helpful, but for example, how you can apply that teaching to engineering class? Well, I don't know if this is relevant, but I, I took physics online as an undergrad. It's sort of related to civil engineering? Maybe. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it because I, because I don't really like physics. <laughs> so it was, it was just everything was very clearly presented. There, there were PowerPoints, basically, was the way it was set up. Mm -hmm. and. They would point you to the part in the textbook to go to for extra help. So as I'm going through the PowerPoints, I could look back at the textbook and read up on the sections. There's a discussion board, and we were required to post like three questions a week or something. Mm -hmm. And then you were required to answer three questions a week. So that would really, you'd really have to think about, the, and we had problem sets, and you'd have to work through the problem set online, and it would guide you. And there were, it was, whoever did it was really good with PowerPoint. You could click things mm -hmm. to 
you know, how do, what is the angle here? And then you click and it would say, here's a hint or something. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't well, know so if that. You, you think this is works? I really, for me, I, I liked it. That's a, much, a very basic class. It was physics 101. Online. And we had to come into the building to physically take tests. I remember that. But I, I need to know more about what it is that would have to be taught. It's just not my field. So what would the typical class consist of in the classroom? Uh, you mean the technology in the mm -hmm. class? No, no, no. What? Content. The content. The content. content. It, it, it could be different. For example, it could be strength of materials, or it could be um, uh, building chemistry. Okay. Let, let me ask this. Why, uh, I, I, again, remembering that online teaching is just a tool. I mean, that's all it is. Online teaching is not a theoretical premise. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not uh, a pedagogy. It's a tool. So the question then becomes, is the tool... Appliable to this kind Yes. Of is it applicable to what you want to do? Mm -hmm. And that's the only question. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is, you know, are you trying to dig a, a hole with a toothpick? Uh, you know, right. yeah. you've got a problem. <laughs> are you, on the other hand, trying to dig a hole with a shovel or something shovel-like? Okay, great. Uh, and it may be that it works even better. Just by the brief part where you're telling me, it, it, it sounds like it would work just fine. The, what I don't know is what kind of, essentially, visual aids you would need. Mm -hmm. Chemistry is easy to do online. Uh, uh, rephrase. Chemical <laughs> equations are easy to do online. Uh, <laughs> formulas are easy to do online. Now, if you're trying, if you're talking about showing how uh, something works, I'd probably doable online. But there's a, you know, there's a point where animation or something along those lines is not that easy to do, or may not be that good but if it's if it's just giving information and you don't need and there's nothing especially unique about it that forces it to be grounded in the classroom in the one-on-one -on -one, then it's probably applicable to online and you talked about there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one type you know yeah. questions stuff like that in that case it may even be more applicable mm -hmm. to online um, you said you were in liberal studies. Mm -hmm. Did you have a lot of contact, one-on-one -on -one contact with your faculty? I mean, and maybe I'm unique, no, but I'm guessing most. No, mostly through email. I mean, through me, okay. I live local, so on occasion. Yeah, but uh, I, I meant like um, talking to them on the phone or via email yes. or something like that. Yes, I did quite a lot. And that's been my experience as well, in that you know, if a student is trying to learn something and has a question about it, Rather than waiting for office hours mm -hmm. or to catch you after class, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those, the, the stalker students that follow you to your car. <laughs> oh, I got through my degree. <laughs> <laughs> Vampire students. Um, uh, you don't have to wait for that. You shoot, you know, in my case, you shoot me an email. And usually within, you know, less than 24 hours, you have a response. And sometimes it'll, it'll be, hey, we need to talk about this over the phone. There are some things that just it's easier to talk about than type about. But other than that, it, you know, it, it probably lends itself to it. I'm not married to online education. I, I think there's sometimes it works really well. I think there's sometimes it doesn't work really well and a lot in between. But again, remembering that it's just another tool mm -hmm. in our in our handy dandy tool belt. Handy dandy being the operative. Okay, part may of it. I ask another question? If this I'm is sorry, it's one question per. <laughs> no, 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 please go ahead. If this is the case, <laughs> if this is the case, I haven't noticed that there is a how to put that. There is such a influence in that area of online classes. What is the reason for that? I don't Neither know the I don't college, know the subject. Uh, I, I don't have any experience, so I don't I don't have a good answer for you. I just don't know enough about it. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be faking it, which I'm really good at, but I won't try it here. <laughs> um, 
it, it, there are a couple possibilities. It may be that it's just not the right tool. Yeah. It could be. It may be that there's resistance to using this tool. They're not used to doing it. It may be that there are incentives not to. We don't want to bring in, uh, we don't want to lose another possible line for a full-time faculty member. Uh, you'll get used to the politics of this when you get, you know, when you, uh, and hopefully your advisor is bringing you in on this kind of, you know, discussion. Uh, we don't want to lose a, a potential line and set it up so that we can bring in part-timers to teach these classes online. There are all kinds of different reasons. Some of them political, some of them to do with, with the fit. I, which one it is, is the third one? I, I don't know. Yeah. No, that really makes it difficult. And technology should never be seen as a one-size-fits-all. Domain yeah. specificity. Domains make a difference. If it doesn't fit your domain, like civil engineering, if it doesn't fit your content, and you try and smoosh your content in a way so that it does fit it, um, flip it around. Pay attention to your content, how you want to engage your students. If, will it help your students engage better with the content? I mean, the simple question. If you can go, no, it won't. I would say next. <laughs> Move on. And remember, online doesn't have to be an either or scenario. There are what's, depending on where you are, called blended or hybrid, hybrid classes. Mm -hmm. And like, I've used my wife uh, as an example as a biologist. Um, you know, I mean, really, can, would you like to, with today's technology, would you really like to try to teach a biology lab online? I mean, I, I suppose my, you, you could. I think my daughter would prefer it because then she wouldn't have to do vivisection. I was going to say, ah, it's, it, this is going to yeah. come down to frog dissection. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, it, which is weird.